You're listening to the weekly partial podcast with Ari Goldweg, recorded with Hashem's never ending assistance in Ramon B'Shem Meshuz Rav 87, 82. This week's parsha is Parshas Acharemos if you're in Chutzlaretz and Kedoshim if you're in Eretz Yisrael. And what I'd like to do over the next few weeks and months where we're not reading the same parshas together, I'd like to pick a, pick a topic that connects the two parshas together so we can have an idea that we can share, we can think about, no matter where we are in the world. And for this, it's not very hard between Achrimos and Kedoshim because the end of Parsha Achrimos, we have the Isurim, Isure Erva, the prohibited relationships, relationships between people that are, that are not allowed, brother and sister, child and parent. We're talking about marital relations. And we have at the beginning of Parsha Kedoshim, we have the concept of Kedoshim to you, that we're supposed to be holy. The concept of holiness has to do with this idea of having the proper boundaries around this concept which the Western world has completely, completely lost sense of boundaries around. And it's an important idea, and it's a very important topic, and it is something that perhaps we could say is the greatest Nisayan of our generation, and perhaps this Nisayan was never at this level as it was in previous times. I'm not going to speak directly to this issue so much. We will see in the Medrash that it does speak about it. But I'd like to read what the Medrash has to say at the end of Parshat Sechremos and at the beginning of Parshat Kedoshim. And very powerful message, very powerful for our times. I think it's important to talk about it, to think about it, to contemplate and to try to strive for something greater. Because as we'll see in the Medrash when we work on this area, so we are inviting the Shekhinah you're inviting the Divine Presence into ourselves, into our homes, into our lives. And if, heaven forbid, we don't work on this area, so then the opposite is true. It's, it's uh, the beginning of destruction. And uh, you might know stories of people who failed, destroyed themselves, destroyed their families as a result of this area. It's worth thinking about, contemplating. And like I said, don't get scared away, but we're going to talk about it. Not like head on so much, but we're going to talk about it. Rav Menashe bar bereid Rav Yeshua ben Levi Omar. Rav Menashe, the son of the son of Rav Yeshua ben Levi, said as follows: Shakol misha roya dvar erva, ve'ena zon ena mimena. A person who sees something forbidden, something licentious, a person who's not sinious, let's say, a person who sees something which is inappropriate, and he looks away. Right? We're not in complete control. You know, you walk out on the street. Sometimes there are things that a person sees. You're checking your email. You'll be checking. I mean, there's lots of places where a person can end up seeing something that they don't want to see. I once did a, uh, I once did a, uh, a poll on YouTube. It, m- most people felt that it happens on occasion that they see an ad on YouTube, um, which is inappropriate. It's not up to their standards. And that's why I took off the ads of my, on my YouTube videos. And, uh, you know, it happens. A person sees something that they don't want to see. It may not even be something that's terrible. Or maybe it's just someone who's not dressed, sneezed. They're not modest to the full level that we're used to looking at. Somebody who sees something that they don't want to see. And they don't focus on it. They turn away. They don't, right? It's hard to battle it head on, right? But I, you know, gently turn myself away from it. The language of the Medrash is he doesn't, he doesn't allow his eyes to be sustained, to have sustenance from it. That person, when we work on this area, so we merit to receive the Divine Presence. Amazing statement of the Medrash. We merit the Divine Presence. My time, where do we see this from? The Pasuk says in Yeshai and Isaiah, chapter 33, verse 15. One who closes his eyes from seeing evil, Maxiv Basrei, what does it say afterwards? When a person closes his eyes from seeing evil, turns away from something that he saw, which is not good. The king and his beauty will your eyes see. You will see faraway lands. So the, the Medrash is understanding the Pasuk to say that when a person turns away from something which is not good, which is inappropriate for him or her, this applies to women as well, what we see affects us. It, what we see causes us to think that that's possibly okay, heaven forbid, right? What we see affects us, no question. So when we turn away from the thing that's negative, what do we get? We get the, the king and his beauty. That's what we see. We see Hashem. We get to see Hashem. Your eyes will see the faraway lands. That means spiritual lands, of course. Okay, so 
a powerful a powerful tool in our daily challenge in this area is to think about the fact that we get to see the divine presence and what that means i don't you know i'm just saying the idea that comes to me but what it means is that there's a spiritual accomplishment in a certain sense when i turn away from the thing and again it needs to uh, if i have too much energy around it, it becomes problematic it becomes it's a hard to get stronger when i when i fight it head on but if I can distract myself, make myself busy with something else, that's a very powerful Eitsa. Chazal tell us this. They say that the uh, sin doesn't come into a person's heart unless it's empty of wisdom. Right? If a person is involved in Tyre and Derech Eretz, it takes a person away from being involved in licentious behavior. So turning away from it is the way, the path to receiving the Divine Presence. Now, in the next piece in the Medrash, which is the beginning of Parshas Kedoshim, so there's a, another idea. It goes off on a tangent, but it brings us back because Kedoshim has to do, being holy means that we separate ourselves from inappropriate behavior in this area. Okay, so the Torah is giving us an opportunity to be somebody special. To be somebody special. But we go off on a bit of a tangent. We, we seem to, to veer out of this, this topic for a while, so we're going to veer away and we're going to come back to it and we'll speak about perhaps how there's a connection between the new topic and this topic that we spoke about until now. Kedeshim to you, Hado Dixiv. Ba'ikba Hashem Tzavokis Pamishu. The Pasik says, Be holy because I am holy. That's what Hashem says. Hashem says, Be holy because I am holy. Says the Mezrish, there's a Pasuk. That Hashem is made great. Hashem is made lofty through His judgment, through divine judgment. What does that mean? We're going to see how it applies to to us and to our Pasuk and to our concept but first we're going to talk about this Tanya Amar Rabbi Shimon Ben Yochai Rabbi Shimon Ben Yochai the Heilig Rabbi Shimon Ben Yochai says when is God's name made great in the world when we see that God does judgment with those who are wicked right when we see that tzaddikim, righteous people the Jewish people are being persecuted Negative things are happening to, to righteous people. And we see that, so it's a kasha. It's a problem. Why is God doing this? How could this thing happen? How could it be that the Jewish people who are righteous, something negative is occurring to them? So it's a kasha. It's a problem. And it causes us to question our faith. When Hashem, however, brings justice to the wicked, and then the, the, those who are righteous, we see that they come out on top in the end. When truth prevails in the end, it's a tremendous Kiddush Hashem. It's a positive thing. It, it brings about a sanctification of God's name. So that's the, the verse. God is raised up. His honor is raised up when there is judgment upon the wicked. <clears throat> this is like Karelian Sagin. We have many verses like this. This verse is in Yechezkel. Ezekiel chapter 38, verse 23. It's talking about when the Mashiach comes, when the Messiah arrives. It's Gadilti Viskadishti. I will be made great. Right? This is based on this. We have the Kaddish, Yiskadal, Yiskadash, Meirabah. We're asking for that future time when Hashem's name will be great. He will become sanctified. Notice the word sanctification, Yiskadishti. Right? We're talking about Kedoshim to you. There's a sanctification of God's name. Right? We need to understand what does it mean to be holy? We talked about it in terms of not looking at the things we shouldn't look at. But what else it means in this context is. Being holy means that Hashem's name, it comes out, a Kiddush Hashem, a sanctification of God's name. Where is the sanctification? When I make myself known, notice the language of Vinaydati, Yediyah, knowing or making itself known, is connected to the concept that we spoke about at the beginning. Right? It refers to Adam and Chava when Adam and Eve are together with marital relations, so it refers to them as Vayeda. He knew his wife's Chava. Okay, so there's a concept here that's clearly connected. But when Hashem makes Himself known, when He reveals Himself, that's also connected, when He reveals Himself, that's when everyone knows that it's Hashem. Right? There's a Kedusha, there's a sanctification of God's name. The Kedusha is, the holiness is, when things are made known, when the truth is made known. Chsiv noida Hashem mishpat osa. Pasuk says in Tehillim in Psalms, God makes Himself known through His judgment. When we see that the wicked 
that they are paid back for their wickedness. When we see the righteous, they come out on top in the end, that's a great revelation of God's name. At this time, I will make them know. Again, this language of knowing. My hand, my power. The Mandas Tzidkai Sashan, the Pasuk in Micha says, that Pasuk was in Yermio, in Jeremiah. 16.21, this passage is in Micha, chapter 6, verse 5, Laman das tzidkais Hashem, in order that you know the righteousness of God. So that's what it means in the verse when it says that God is made righteous through judgments. When God reveals Himself, we see that He's righteous. When God reveals Himself, we see, indeed, there's a kedusha, there's a holiness that's revealed. So when we think about what does it mean that we're supposed to be holy, it means we are, as we'll soon see, and the measure is going to say this, we attach ourselves to holiness. We attach ourselves to truth. Right? We attach ourselves to truth, to justice. And we're going to see that sometimes it seems like things are not good for the righteous. Sometimes it seems like negative things are happening in the world. There are pogroms, there are massacres, there are, you, you name it, what the Jewish people has gone through for the last 2,000 years, being being uh, demonized in the UN, etc. All these things that seem unfair. Why are we being singled out? But we're going to see that by recognizing the truth underlying all of these things, by recognizing that really Hashem is in charge and all the things that are negative are really good. Even the things that seem to be the opposite of good, those are also Hashem, those are also good. So that's attaching ourselves to truth and that is Kedusha, that is holiness, that is sanctifying Hashem's name. Let's see that inside. Rav Brachi B'Shem Rabbi Levi Amar Hado Dixiv. This is what it means. Vatam Arum Nalam Hashem. You are always raised up, Hashem. You are always Vatam Marim LaOilam Hashem. LaOilam Yot Chaval Yoyin. Your hand is always. You always have the upper hand. Now, what does it mean that God always has the upper hand? Let's see. B'Noyik Sheba Oilam Melech Basar Adam Badin. In the way of the world, if a flesh and blood king, a regular human king, so he says certain things. He's involved in a din, and he says, he brings down his judgment, he says what the judgment is. So when he gives a positive thing, he brings it down a positive judgment, he says, let this person be awarded a certain amount of money, whatever, so everyone praises him. But when the king, a flesh and blood king, he, he's, he's bringing down a judgment which is negative, in Kobriya Makalesis, I say. Everyone is shaking. Everyone's quiet. They don't know what to say. They don't, they don't want to praise him. They're afraid what's going to happen if he judges me. They know that there could be a mistake in his judgment. So they're afraid. They're afraid, even though they might think that they're righteous, they might be, they're afraid to be judged. But God is not that way. Says the Medrash, when it comes to God, when it comes to His judgments, when it comes to the way that reality plays out in the world, we don't always understand it, of course. And there are questions, and there are difficulties in understanding how is, it, how is this justice? How do we understand that the Jewish people who have remained faithful for 2,000 years to God's Torah and to His Emunah, having faith in Him, etc., how is it that difficult situations arise for the Jewish people? Right? But if we put that question on hold, and we have a moon, and we have bitach, and we, we have faith in God. We put that question on hold, and we recognize that it's always God, and God is always just, and God always cares and loves us, and everything is for our good. So when it comes to God, even when something bad happens, so to speak, there's room for kilos, there's room to praise Him. Let's see. Let's see onward. The Medrash explains this more. Rav Huna b'shem Rav Acha Amar. Rav Huna in the name of Rav Acha explains as follows. See the verse says the David Mizmor. The pasuk says that King David sang a song. Chesed u Mishpat, kindness and judgment. Ashir l'cha Hashem azamera. I will sing to you, Hashem. I will sing. What's he saying? It's very strange. He's singing because of kindness and judgment. What's what's going on? So it's our our concept. King David says in front of Hashem, If you do kindness with me, I will sing. Whether it's kindness 
or whether it's not kindness, I will sing to Hashem. Interesting change in Lashon. Ashira is a certain kind of song. Azamera is a different kind of song. You have to know the differences between them. I'm not going to get into that now. So we see this idea. King David was somebody who was able to sing good situations, negative situations. He kept singing. He kept praising God. And I would say, it's important to even point out already at this point, I would say when we attach ourselves to the truth of the fact that God is good and that even if we don't see the good at this moment, we still believe it's good. Like we spoke about last week with the story of the freezers that didn't, that didn't work out, the freezers that didn't work. Remaining, remaining true to what we know, that God is good, and this must be good as well. So that's a powerful affirmation of truth. That's a sanctification of Hashem's name. That's Kedusha. We will see the truth in the end. When the Sheikh, when the Messiah arrives, Vizgadalti, Vizgadashti, Hashem says, I'm going to be made great, I'm going to be made holy. You're going to see the truth in the end. That all along, all the things that I did that seem to be negative are really good. That the Jewish people all along were my chosen special people. That will be made clear in the end. The truth will be revealed. Those who are wicked will be destroyed. They will receive the final judgment, the, that which is true, the truth will be revealed. So when we attach ourselves to that from the beginning, so we're, we're making a Kiddush Hashem, what well, Kiddush Hashem it is. Right? I don't know if you saw the video on Yom HaShoah here in Israel of the 90-year-old Holocaust survivor who is a Sandik and his great-grandson, one out of 49 children, great-grandchildren, as the siren was going off to remind us to think about the, the Holocaust, the people who died, lost their lives in the Holocaust, who were murdered in the Holocaust. At that very moment, he was sitting there with a, with a great-grandchild on his lap, and then the bris was happening. What a moving video, what a moving thing. When you see Kodesh Baruch Hu, look, 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 despite that, despite what happened, we're still here. We're in Eretz Yisrael. We're in the land of Israel. The siren is blowing, and this man survived, and generations have come out. What an incredible, incredible Kiddush Hashem. Such a moving thing. And this is, a, this is a revelation. This is a revelation. This is an incredible revelation of, of God in the world. You see that despite this darkness, there's truth in the end. There's good in the end. He says twice, In God, Elohim, which is the name of God's judgment, I will praise Him. Bashem, which is the name of God's uh, mercy, I will praise Hashem. Either way, whether it looks like judgment, whether it looks like mercy, I'm still going to praise Hashem. It's a passage of Tehillim, chapter 56, verse 5. Rabban Amri, Hashem We find... Also in Tehillim, King David was a master being able to praise Hashem despite all the challenges and difficulties. Such beautiful words of King David. When I find difficulty and oppression, I will call out to God. I will recognize that it's from Hashem. And when I'm successful, when I, when I win over my enemies, I will call out in the name of Hashem. That's Kiddush Hashem. Seeing Hashem everywhere. Rav Yudin bar Rav Pilya, who she Eiv Aimer, find also Eiv says Job said, this is in Eiv chapter one verse twenty one, Hashem Nosam Hashem Lokach Yishem Hashem Evoyrach, God gave and God took, may God's name be blessed. Bein Shenosam Berachem Nosam, Bein Shenot Berachem Notol, God is He's a Rachman, He's merciful. So so He could bless Hashem despite the difficulties. Hashem, is, Hashem knows what He's doing. Everything that God does is really good in the end. We'll see it in the end, but it's good even now. When God gives, He doesn't ask anybody. He doesn't ask permission. Interesting point that the Medrash is pointing out. When God brings judgment upon a person or on, on the world, so He discusses it, so to speak, with the, His court, with his angels, with the ministering angels, as it were. Which means, there's, there's mercy always there. There's always mercy. The Pasuk talks about this concept. We're not going to get into that. Here we come to the end of the Medrash. 
bringing it back. And I'd like to point out before we get back to the original topic, which had to do with with the inappropriate relationships. I'd like to point out here that there's you know there's we can't look at certain things right when we I, I don't know about you but when I hear stories of of Klaus or the Jewish people it's very hard for me to read stories about the Holocaust I read it on Tisha B'Av it's very hard for me to hear those stories it's hard for me to think about situations like what happened last year we spoke about it after Lagba Omer last year when 45 people lost their lives and it's very difficult to think about it I think about it I, I could get I could get so sad right but we don't look. Part of what this message is saying is, I need to hold on to my faith, which is I can't look at that thing. There's times that we can look and we can see the beauty of something, right? We can see that this is Hashem. We can see, wow, look, the Jewish people are flourishing in the land of Israel. This is incredible. We see the, the, the rebirth of the Jewish nation back in the land of Israel, seven million people strong, right? So we look at that and it's beautiful. It's something in that we can look at. But then we can look back and say what happened 75 years ago, 6 million Jews were slaughtered. We can't, we can't even, and in a horrible, terrible, terrible, there's not even, there's not even words, you can't even say terrible because it doesn't properly describe it. Right, so, so you can't look at that, there's like a, you know, you can't look. There are places that we can look and there are places we can't look. So I like to point out here, as a connection, and when we look at a place that's wrong and we don't have the proper outlook on it so we're looking at something and revealing something that shouldn't be revealed we're looking at something that can't be looked at and when we don't look there and we just say Kadosh Hashem is holy He has Rachmanus we don't understand the mercy where's the mercy in that but we understand that that's true and we attach ourselves to the truth and we don't look that's where we reveal that's a Kiddush Hashem we reveal Hashem's name there we reveal that God is there even though we don't know how we don't want to look at it but we reveal that it's there We'll see, we will see in the end that he was there all along. There's a revelation in, sometimes there's a revelation in looking, and then sometimes there's a revelation in not looking. Okay, that's the, that's what I'd like to say is the connection to the issue of what we saw at the very beginning, of not looking at things that are, that are licentious, that are inappropriate. Turning away, and that's where we bring in the Shekhinah, we bring in the Divine Presence there. Right? person is married, they're, they're allowed to look. Right? at certain times of the month there are certain times that we're, where it's appropriate and that's Shekhinah as well it's a different kind of Shekhinah than the looking away when it's not the right time to look when it's not the right person to look at the Torah gives us these boundaries and this these clarity in order to understand that it's good it's all good but it's good in the right way of looking at it we can't look at it whenever we want we can't see things that we're not meant to see it's the same idea of yidiyah, of knowing. It's the same idea of connecting, connecting to truth in the context of, of, of understanding God's judgment and, and how everything is Rahmanis. We have to be careful how we look at it. Looking at it wrong can have a negative consequence. Same thing in this area. It says, Rav Yudin, you are exalted. We said this passage before. You are exalted. What does it mean? You act in an exalted way in this world. Aaron is a Kohen, he's a priest. Concept of the Bris Melach, the covenant of the salt. I'm not going to get into that. You gave kingdom to King David, right? King David recording all of these verses about him. He's this master of being able to see the good, able to sing to God whether it seems good or whether it seems the other, the other way around. Pasuk says in Deir it is upon you to know that Hashem gave the kingship. So the Kedush of Israel ends off the Medrash with our original point, which is the holiness of the people of Israel. to you, We are to be holy. When we look at things in the right way and we don't look at things when they shouldn't be looked at, so we are attaching ourselves to God's holiness. King David is the one who reveals the holiness and the, the truth of godliness everywhere, in the good, in the negative. He sings to God everywhere. He's able to reveal that in the places that we can look 
in the places we can't look because it's too too overwhelming to look in that place that looks negative. But we look away and we say, this is God. This is also God. That's the aspect of King David. He's the one who reveals that, the, that God is there even when you can't see Him there. And so too, when it comes to the Kedusha of the Jewish people, when it comes to our holiness, we obtain holiness by not looking in the places where we're not supposed to look. That's where the Shekhinah comes in, as we said at the beginning. That's where the Divine Presence comes in. It comes in in the place where we don't look because we recognize that looking in the right places looking at the things that are shayach to us, that, that have to do with us only, that, the, the things that are, you know, are ours and appropriate in the right time, right? Looking at those things, we recognize that that's where God is. God, we, we can't look elsewhere. We can't see the things where it, it's not appropriate to. That's what Kedusha is about. Kedusha is about seeing and not and knowing when to see and when not to see and recognizing that those places where we're not supposed to look, that's because Hashem wants us to. That's also from Hashem. Places where we're allowed, that's from Hashem as well. Everything is from Hashem. And these are great challenges. These are awesome things. But this is Kedusha. This is what holiness is about. This is how we reveal holiness in our incredibly unholy civilization. Western society is falling and crumbling because of these areas because of their lack of boundaries, because of their lack of ability to close their eyes. And so the Shekhinah pulls away from those places as we see going on. You see what's going on, and you can, all you can say, you look at the Western world, look at what's going on in the United States, look at what's going on in, in Europe, you can see the crumbling because of this terrible, terrible uh, inability to control themselves. And so we, as the children of Klal Yisrael, we, as the Bnei Yisrael, we have... This obligation, condition to you, to look only where we're allowed to look and not look where we're not supposed to look. To look at the time when we're supposed to look and not look at the time when we're not supposed to look. To recognize this is God's judgment. This is, we don't understand, this is God's Rahmanas, but it's really all Hashem's Rahmanas. It's all of His mercy. I want to bless you and ask you to bless me. Hashem should help us that we should be able to indeed strengthen ourselves in the areas that need strengthening. Hashem should help us to be able to Sing to God, no matter what the situation is. Thank you so much for listening. Have a wonderful Shabbos. This podcast was made possible through the gracious donations of listeners like you. For more podcasts like this, please visit www.arigoldwag.com or search on iTunes, Ari Goldwag.